okay, there is a war of information waging right now. And I want to show you how just um, a certain medicine that allegedly can treat a certain disease, how that, I'm going to use that to prove to you that this war exists. Let me close this window because this is important. So there are studies that show that this medicine is ineffective in treating this virus. That is true. There are also studies showing that this medicine is dangerous. That is also true. There are studies that show this medicine is the most effective treatment available for this virus. That is also true. But how can all three of these be true? And here's the thing, no one person will has yet to give you all three pieces of this information. And it's almost like as a society, we've taken off a part of our brains and handed it to authorities. And we've said, we don't want to think, you think for us. And so we've offloaded that responsibility. So we just accept what they tell us. And so if our source tells us that it's ineffective, we believe it's ineffective. If our source tells us that it's dangerous, we believe it's dangerous. If our source tells us that it is safe and effective, that's what we believe because we don't look into the information for ourselves. So how can all three be true? Well, it's simple science and people have forgotten about science. Science is observation catalog. People say, oh, that's just anecdotal. Everything is anecdotal until you catalog it. The cataloging is the scientific approach. You make observations and you record them. And then you use that data to then in, uh, instruct your decisions and your, your choices. So that is the scientific method. So how can all three be true at the same time? Well, all medicines go through uh, trials, right? And so c clinical trials is just organized observations. And a clinical trial is where you control the environment to the extent to where you know every variable, so you know how to read all of the effects that you're observing. So you can find what's called the minimum effective dose, which means below this amount, there will be no effect. So are there studies that show this medicine is ineffective against the virus? Yes, because there is a minimum effective dose, which means if you don't take this minimum dose, there will be no effect, no statistically significant effect that can be measured. So there are legitimate studies that show this is ineffective. Then there are studies that show it's dangerous, and that's because there's a maximum safe dose where most medicines are simply controlled poisons. Okay, you're poisoning and you're taking the exact right dose to have the desired effect to kill the target organism without harming the other organisms, mainly your body, your organs, your cells, everything. So that's what pharmacopoeia means. That's what pharmacy means. Pharmacopoeia means the, um, the range of poisons, poisonous plants that we know. That's pharmacopoeia. That's the controlled substances. That's I'll get into that later. So we know that there are studies that say this medicine is dangerous because it is a controlled poison. It's a poison that we take in a controlled dose. But there are also studies which you can look up and I maybe I'll link them here eventually, but right now I just want to get this out. There are studies that show that this medicine in the exact right dosage at you know the right amount over the right amount of time will effectively treat this disease. And there's different doses that are right for different stages of the disease, which is why also some studies have shown no effect at this at this stage, but then that same amount seems to be effective at this stage. So the effective dose changes, and that's because all living systems have a metabolism rate, which means the rate at which they can digest or consume it. So imagine you're drinking water, you reach a saturation point where you can no longer drink enough water and it just starts flowing all over you. That's like when you when you take so much vitamins that you just your piss turns neon because you've reached saturation point for that vitamin, but not the maximum. You've reached the maximum effective dose, which means more simply just washes over you, but you haven't reached the maximum safe dose, which means it's not harming you to have that wash over your cells, your organs, you know, to where you're taking too much. But this medicine, as all controlled poisons do, has a maximum effective dose and a minimum effective dose, and it has a maximum safe dose. That is why there are going to be studies that show it's not effective because they've chosen a dose that is ineffective. They can have studies that show that it's dangerous because they've chosen a dose that is dangerous, whether on purpose or by accident, but that's part of the scientific process. That's part of what we have clinical trials for is to find the optimum dose for that medicine. That means that is the exact amount that if you take this, it will target this organism 
get the exact effect that we want without too many side effects. Okay, does that make sense? Now, you're not being told all of this by any one person. You're only being told by people that you normally trust that it's either ineffective or dangerous. Then you're only being told by people that are questionable at best that it is safe and effective and, in fact, the best option we have. And so this is how they control you, okay? So if you only accept messages from a certain type of messenger, then you can easily be controlled. If you only accept something when it's told to you by your priest, then guess what? All I have to do is control the priests and I can control you. I can control what you will even accept as true or false. If you only accept what is said by uh, doctors who maybe are viewed in a certain way and don't have these crazy other beliefs, then I can control all those doctors and therefore, you know, either through money, bribery, because all, all people of a certain type also have the same similar weaknesses, so I can find those vices. And that's where someone like Jeffrey Epstein or even Hugh Hefner comes in, because all the people that we have been conditioned to trust in our society operate and live and exist in an environment that has trapped them. In other words, they've been addicted to something, whether it's drugs, power, sex, whatever it is, they've been addicted to something that can then be controlled and then they are controlled. And because we look up to them and we listen to them, we are controlled. So this is how the hierarchy of power works. Okay. And why this particular substance that treats this particular disease is so important is because it is also known to have some positive effects. Okay. And now just think about this for a second. This substance is a controlled substance because you can only get it via prescription in the United States. However, it is not on the controlled substances list, which means it has not been found to be dangerous enough to say we need to control this substance, right? It's only controlled in dispensation. It's not controlled in danger or restriction. It's controlled in dispensation, which means that obviously the people who are controlling it know that it's not really that dangerous, otherwise it would be a controlled substance, but it has an effect that they wish to not have in the general public. That's why they control the dispensation. That's like why they control marijuana, because it has a very definite effect, but it's an effect that's safe. That's why they can't say it's dangerous and, and control it anymore. They have to start legalizing it, but they have to control the dispensation of it because it has an effect that they don't like. In other words, it makes people think for themselves. And this other substance, which happens to treat this virus that's going around. It also treats rheumatoid arthritis. It treats malaria, it treats other things, but it has a certain effect on the pineal gland, allegedly, that maybe I won't go into that because I don't want to say things that I cannot prove directly. And I'll leave that for another time, but let's leave it at this. There is obviously, because it is not a controlled substance, but its dispensation is controlled, you have to get a prescription for it. That means that the government wants to control it, even though they've admitted it's not dangerous, which tells me that it has an effect that the government doesn't want, which would indicate that they can't control the people who take it. So why is that important? Because how are we being controlled right now? How do you get intelligent people to do stupid things? You get them to act out of emotion rather than logic and reason. And the most effective way of doing that is fear. Everyone that we have chosen to trust is telling us to be afraid. Be afraid of this virus. Be afraid of the economy. Be afraid of Trump. Be afraid of uh, white nationalists. Be afraid of Antifa. Be afraid of cops. Be afraid of everything. Fear, fear, fear. And when we're afraid, we go into what's called fight or flight mode. And that is why domestic abuse is up. You know, child abuse is up arguments in the street is up and people are not thinking rationally. And that is also how they maintain us in this bubble because suddenly we're in fight or flight. So anyone who is new or saying something that we reject, that gen that actually triggers our fear mechanism to have our worldview challenge triggers our fear mechanism. And that puts us even more into fight or flight. So we're in a perpetual state of we're ready to either fight with someone or just run and I don't want to hear it. Just don't tell me. So we stick to the sources we trust, which again are those controlled sources that they control. This is their power mechanism. And sadly, 
Very few people are willing to accept a message from a messenger that they do not trust or respect or like. That is why so many people reject anything that Trump says, because they have rejected him. Therefore, they do not believe that any truth can come from him. But this is part of the great awakening is that you have to grow up and learn to not judge a book by its cover and not judge a message by its messenger. We have to examine the evidence and think for ourselves. Take back that thinking ability that we've handed off to authorities said that it's too, too, life is too hectic. I don't have time to think about that. So you think for me and tell me what to think. That has to stop. We have to start thinking for ourselves because we have painted ourselves into a corner. We are dependent. We are not independent creatures. I cannot go out and hunt food for myself or grow it myself and live in a city. And I don't know how to generate electricity or build a computer or, uh, you know, the whole transportation infrastructure. We are dependent on society. Therefore, we need to be awake. Otherwise, people can take control of our entire lives. They'll First, they'll take control of the messengers that we trust. Then they will put us into a state of emotion, in this case fear, where they can then manipulate us and then take further control of the institutions that we rely upon, the infrastructure. This is what is happening with 5G. It's not that it is necessarily a dangerous weapon. It might be, but I... That is not what I see. What it is, is it's a tool. If China owns all of our telecommunications infrastructure, literally the towers and the devices that we're communicating on, they control our information. They're slowly taking control. I'm not saying China is the, the big bad guy. They are one bad guy, but we need to wake up. And here's the thing, we're it. If you're watching this right now and you've come this far, you're it. You're part of the very few people who is willing to listen to a messenger that you might not trust and actually hear them out. That's why <laughs> That's why it looks like we're screwed because there's very few people who are willing to come this far and listen to, to information that makes them feel uncomfortable from someone that, that hasn't earned their trust. But we have to wake up the rest of humanity. Where we go one, we go all means that either you're just gonna sit back and hope that it all works out for the best or you're willing to do something about it. And if you're willing to do something about it, what you need to do is Educate yourself on the information that I presented here. Figure out how you can prove it to yourself. Don't trust me. You've listened to me. You've heard me out. Now examine my evidence and prove it to yourself. And then practice explaining it to other people. That's why groups is good because that's part of the scientific process. You, you first prove it to yourself. You go out and do the experiments. You do the research, whatever it is you have to do to gather the information. Then you digest the information and then you regurgitate the information or you apply it. So you need to understand what you just taught yourself and then you need to learn how to express it in a way that is coherent and hopefully convincing. Because the people that are left to wake up are the people who do not trust a message from a messenger they dislike. So unless we mimic the messengers that they trust, we are not going to be able to reach them because they will just dismiss us and they will keep being in fear, 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 and eventually they will be the danger. That is the only weapon that our enemy has left is the people. This is the Wizard of Oz and his only power is his fear, is his intimidation, is his image. So let's take on that image and let's stop judging the message by the messenger, even among us. If someone looks like they're a bad actor, judge them by the fruits of their actions, judge them by their information. Don't judge them by how you emotionally react to them. Yes, follow your gut, but don't live by your gut and don't don't make decisions in an emotional state. So I need these, all of you listening this far, just we need to calm down, okay? And that's part of how they control us too, is when you're always in a state of fear and anxiety, you need to drug yourself. So you have alcohol, or if you're smart, you have cannabis. Uh, so you sedate yourself to a level to where you can actually think clearly. That's part of what this medicine does is it, activates the pineal gland and it opens up your clear thinking, which is why I'm able to speak so lucidly and clearly to you because I just had um, a tonic water because guess what's in tonic? It's the exact same thing that is in that medicine that they don't want you to have. So go and get like Indian tonic water or tonic water. If it's made with quinine, then you're good to go and check the dosage and consume accordingly and awaken yourself, do the research, Discuss it amongst yourselves and figure out how to express it in the way that you can. I'm working with Austin Steinbart. I believe in QAnon and I believe that 
whoever you think he is, he is organizing a group of people like me who think clearly and who can craft a message in a way that the people who judge a message by its messenger will listen to. I'm working with him. You don't have to support him. Just let's stop fighting amongst ourselves. And we have a mission. We are at war. It is a war of information. If you want to call it a spiritual war, I agree with that. But we have to keep woo-woo out of this because the people we want to reach dismiss woo-woo. And that's the problem with woo-woo is you can't prove it. And my woo-woo might not agree with your woo-woo. And uh, if we start talking about that, we're going to just start arguing. That's pointless. We can discuss that later. Let's, we have a mission. We are at war. And please join us. This is the Great Awakening. We are the news now. It means we need to wake up. We need to organize. We need to work to reach the people that deserve to hear the truth from someone they respect. Let's be those people that they can respect. Let's go out there and wake some people. Thank you for your time. Uh, 15, 16 minutes isn't bad. So get on with your day and uh, where we go, when we go all. Ciao.